Uh, thanks, Warren. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm a boss or I'm anything, but uh, I want to acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of this country and for the great privilege they give us at this time of the year to come here and to hear from many, many people who have insights into many different things. And today it's education, uh, to hear the wisdom and knowledge that arises. And what I wonder about sometime is where does this go? Where does it go? How does it get focused in order to affect the change that most who speak about change are passionate and are in fact innovative about creating the change? But where else does it go when we look at the broader picture of our society and this nation? The, and I was supposed to do the wrap-up, but I missed out because, um, unfortunately, I uh, was doing something on Radio National about the awful things that uh, pertain to the criminal justice system in this territory. Um, but for me, it's um, education, learning, is really about a relationship. It's the quality of the relationship you establish with the younger person. And you can see what horrified us the other day was there's no relationship with those young kids and those prison officers. Absolutely none. They were treated as if they were just straw or, bowl, you know, something in a bag to be thrown around. And when we come to try to educate people, we've got to have a relationship with them. And that relationship really means how do we understand where they're coming from, where it is that they come from, not from where I come from or what I think is important or what I see as critical, but to absolutely enter into their space and learn as to what it is that motivates them, what it is that annoys them, what it is that drives them insane because of the way we behave towards them. To really enter into the space in which they live if they don't get sleep at night, if there's arguments, if there's rows, if there's insufficient accommodation, etc. All of those things, we've got to be able to understand that and then use those factors also as part of the reform for the learning context. Because it's not just the school, it's not just the teacher, but those kids are coming out of some kind of environment, some kind of learned environment or some environment that's instilling to them. The systems the Royal Commission is going to inquire into is not going to look at that, unfortunately. It's going to look at the system that prevails according to law when it comes to the running of institutions that incarcerate and hold kids and subject them to the sorts of disciplines that they believe are appropriate. We've got to be aware of the value of others, completely aware of the values of others, because their values is what makes our world unique. And how do we then help their value to grow, to come out and blossom and prosper and contribute, rather than seeing them as some kind of deficit, some kind of empty vessel that has to be filled with all this wonderful knowledge that we may have. It's how do we extract, which is really the origins of the word education, how do we extract out of these young people the values that they hold, the richness that they might aspire to, so that we can enable that to, in fact, take place? And that's really the work of nation building as well. Because it is about how do we create a respect for diversity and difference in our society? If we can't inculcate it in a school environment, it's far more difficult to inculcate it into a society that is distracted by many other challenges. So unless those seed beds in a schooling context enables those young people to understand diversity and difference, respect, and are able to live in a way that gives recognition to that, then we are not building the kind of citizens that we require in a complicated modern democracy. Because what we'll see is the prejudices, 
the, the, the extreme right-wing attitudes towards things like same-sex marriage or many other factors, the intolerance in our society about people of difference and, and their diversity. We've got to be innovative. And innovation is a word that education often is associated with. But the innovation is often within a lineal kind of context. We've got to think about it as a cyclical matter. How do we, in fact, innovate the ways in which we contemplate the definitions? We're so prone to go to dictionaries for interpretations of words and even concepts at times. And that's fine. A lot of people have thought about these things and they've put their best efforts into that. But when it comes to the challenges you're faced with, with young people particularly, when you come to think of work and effort and enterprise and you correlate that against leisure, fun and well-being, we've got to have a real innovative way of trying to work out with those young people and others in other contexts, but how to work that out in a way that is relevant and meaningful for those people to whom we are trying to hand on something. We do not want them to be just clones of ourselves. They are unique in their own individuality and in their own circumstances. So how do we enable that to blossom? And I'll finish with this because I'm sorry I was supposed to summarise this, but I missed out on most of it, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I just thought I'd add those few words to give you something to think about. Um, but one of the, a bit of a personal chapter. Uh, the horizon for me as a kid, and I grew up in Catherine, just down the road here, went to the primary school. And this is before we were even counted as citizens in this country. And the horizon at that time was that we as Indigenous kids, Aboriginal kids, could only aspire to, in fact, getting our driver's licence, if we were very smart. Get a driver's licence, and then you might get a job. And the jobs were limited in those days. There was a thing up here called the Works and Housing. They did the, most of the roads and contractual work for civil activities because it's a Commonwealth matter. And if you got a job with, the, with that entity, then you'd really achieve the pinnacle of what it was. But as I looked around growing up and I saw Aboriginal people, more senior to me and people to whom I respected, carrying water on a yoke after a full day of chipping weeds or grass around someone's house, and walking back to the bush because there was no water reticulation. And I wondered, why was that the case? Why was it the case that people had to live like that? And why was it that after a long, hard day battling in the sun, these senior people still had the burden of carrying water back to the little humpy that they had in the bush behind where I lived? And the other aspect that I learned very early in life was to work amongst men on a cattle station and to bring cattle into the railhead of Catherine after several days and then to be picked up by the, the manager of the station and be given the equivalent wages that those senior, more experienced men than me as a 12-year-old just made me think, well, with the value of the labour of those men and in that particular industry and my contribution was put on a par and why was that the case? I had none of the experience, none of the qualities, none of the knowledge and yet I was remunerated at the same level as these very senior, more mature men and more capable men. So education to me has always been about looking at things, analysing them and asking yourself why is this the case? Can it be improved and can I improve in the process of trying to help others to improve? Thank you.